And we have what's called the slaughter of the kings. Now, Abraham, his, his name is later changed to Abraham, so we still sometimes call him that even in these early chapters. He had 318 trained servants trained for war. In other words, he maintained his own army of 300 people, 318, which tells you that the holdings of Abraham were extensive, not just a little tribal chieftain, but a man of extreme means. And he succeeded where these other five kings failed in capturing uh, and rescuing his, his uh, nephew. But when he returns from this victory, he encounters a strange character by the name of Melchizedek. And uh, Melchizedek is the king and priest of a place called Salem. Now this is, he also would disappear from history probably, except for the fact that in Psalm 110, and several other places, especially in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, the writer spends a great deal of time talking about this strange character called Melchizedek. What makes him distinctive, well, several things. One is, he is a king and a priest. As you go through the Old Testament, you'll discover, under, after Moses and following, we have the kingship under Judah, the royal line, and we have the priesthood under Levi. The priest and king were separate, and distinctively so, deliberately so that those two uh, lines of authority were uh, different. But here Melchizedek is both. And the writer of the book of Hebrews makes a big thing of this, pointing out that Jesus Christ is distinctive in that he's a king and a priest. He is not like, it's not the Levitical priesthood that he's a priest of, but the, of the order of Melchizedek. So Melchizedek becomes a very important thing to understand. Now he receives, Melchizedek receives tithes from Abraham. So that makes him spiritually senior, if you will, to um, Abraham. And uh, again, Hebrews 6 makes a big thing of this because Levi, the Levitical priesthood comes from Levi, and Levi is in the loins of Abraham, rabbinically speaking. So that means that Melchizedek is senior to not just Abraham, but to the whole Levitical priesthood. The Levitical priesthood was a temporary priesthood. It will be superseded, of course, by Christ's priesthood, which is after the order of Melchizedek. And these allusions in Psalm 110 and uh, Hebrews chapters 5, 6, and 7 are essential to really understand Melchizedek. We bring him up here, though, because he uh, uh, operated from a place called Salem that will later be conquered by, the, conquered by the Jebusites, and after that, David will take it, and it's the site of Jerusalem. So we'll discover the Bible is really a tale of two cities, Babylon, the city of man, and Jerusalem, the city of God. City, uh, Jerusalem, with all its problems, is always still presented as the city of God, uh, eclipsed, of course, in the final cl climax with the new Jerusalem in Revelation uh, uh, 20 through 22. Now, one interesting thing about Melchizedek, when, when Abraham presents his tithes to him for this great victory, Melchizedek administers to Abraham bread and wine. We find that provocative because all the way through the scripture, bread and wine will reemerge. In the story of Joseph, we have those two, the baker and the wine steward that are in prison and the dreams there are very pivotal to his whole career. Again, it's bread and wine echoing all the way through, of course, climaxing to the Lord's Supper. And so we find these threads planted here very early.